Issue 5. Setting. The setting is a lot like the water level in a video game. People tend to get stuck on it for a lot longer than they should. There's a whole subset of writers who do nothing but create settings. They build maps, create languages, invent interesting political structures, draw building layouts. What they don't do is write the damn story. So lesson one for setting is lantern, not floodlight. What do I mean by that? Well, setting mad authors tend to overshare their super cool, mega neat world. Every scene starts with four pages of description about the cool widgets and wonk bots and magic horbrims. It's like going everywhere with a floodlight shining on everything all at once. And for the reader, it's usually tedious as heck. Their eyes will start skipping over sentences, then paragraphs, then entire pages in a wild hunt for something that doesn't begin with it was made of, or it was taller than. So, no floodlight, lantern. Show us what is immediately of concern. Things that tell us where we are, things that can be used or taken, things that the character looks at or has an investment in. But, oh no, this means my super mega horbrim might never be seen. That's right, it might not. Deal with it. And this leads us to an even bigger problem. Over-modifying. First-time fantasy authors often fall prey to this. Not only do they have a race of elves in their story, the elves are flying elves who control electricity and have horns that uh, summon donuts. They put all this down and go, yeah, so cool. But when they start writing, they run into a problem. It doesn't seem cool. So they add more, and more, and more. In contrast, a more experienced fantasy writer might just make one change, and then take a lot of time to explore what the change actually means to society. In the case of flying elves, they might ask, what does this mean for how they live? If that's the only change from a more real-world scenario, then they probably live higher up to avoid ground-based predators. They probably feel a kinship with birds and flying mammals like bats, and domesticate them. And there are probably complex laws governing how and where the elves can fly in order to protect the elite and prevent collisions. Thusly, there are probably flying cops with air-to-air -air, non-lethal weapons of some variety. Now it's starting to sound cool, isn't it? And I didn't even need to add the donut horns. So when you reach beyond a normal setting, spend some time exploring the ramifications of your changes. Just don't spend too much time on it. Lantern, not floodlight, remember. Thanks for listening, and good words to you all.